Is Slovakia undermining Western solidarity? In late 2023, Slovak voters elected a new government, led by a former long-standing prime minister widely regarded as pro-Russian. The country has since pushed back against helping neighbouring Ukraine in its war against Moscow. But as many ordinary Slovaks find a novel way to help Ukraine, there are signs that the government's position might also be changing. So, has Russia lost a valuable partner, or is Slovakia still one of NATO's weak links? Hello and welcome. If you're new to the channel, my name is James Kerlinzi, and here I take an informed look at international relations, conflict and security. The war in Ukraine has dramatically reinvigorated Western unity. After the deep splits of the Trump era, which followed years of speculation that Washington was gradually shifting its attention away from Europe and towards Asia, the conflict in Eastern Europe has led to a new sense of purpose amongst NATO and European Union countries. In addition to imposing unprecedented economic sanctions on Russia and providing extensive military aid to Ukraine, they've reaffirmed their commitment to collective defence, welcomed new members into the NATO alliance and even opened EU accession talks with several states from Central and Eastern Europe. However, despite this newfound sense of cohesion, several countries have failed to join the united economic, political, diplomatic and even military front against Russia. One of these is NATO member Turkey. Maintaining close ties to Moscow, it's refused to implement EU and US sanctions on Russia. Another is EU and NATO member Hungary. In addition to consistently trying to thwart its partner's efforts to take a tough line on Moscow, its leader, Prime Minister Viktor Orban, has openly admitted that he admires the Russian president, Vladimir Putin. But more recently, yet another country has emerged as a source of concern, Slovakia. The Slovak Republic is a landlocked state in Central Europe, covering an area of approximately 49,000 square kilometers or 19,000 square miles. To its south is Hungary, to its west are Austria and the Czech Republic, and to its north is Poland. To its east, it has a 100 kilometer or 60 mile border with Ukraine. The population is around 5.4 million. Around 80% ethnic Slovaks, with the remaining comprising Hungarians, Roma, Czechs, and others. Slovakia traces its roots back to the 5th and 6th centuries when Slavic tribes began to settle in Central Europe. Eventually, they came together to form the Great Moravian Empire. Following the empire's collapse in the early 10th century, the area then fell under the Kingdom of Hungary, which would eventually become part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. This lasted until the 20th century. When Austria-Hungary collapsed at the end of the First World War in 1918, the northern Slavic population, the Czechs and Slovaks, established an independent state. Czechoslovakia. While Czechoslovakia would go on to become the most economically prosperous and democratic state in Eastern Europe, internal tensions emerged. Smaller, less populous and less developed than the Czech parts of the country, Slovakia was very much the junior partner. This would all come to a head in March 1939, as Czechoslovakia collapsed following Hitler's annexation of the western part of the country, Slovakia also broke away. Under its authoritarian leader, Josef Tiso, it became an ultra-nationalist Nazi puppet state during the Second World War. Although Czechoslovakia was re-established at the end of the war, the political landscape was completely different. Falling under communist control, the country became part of the Soviet-dominated Warsaw Pact throughout the Cold War. However, this period ended in 1989 when a peaceful revolution overthrew communist rule. But while the country was reconstituted as a democratic federation, pressure grew for greater Slovak autonomy. In 1992, the Czech and Slovak leaders agreed to dissolve the country, the so-called Velvet Divorce, and on the 1st of January 1993, the two parts emerged as separate independent states. Although the Czech Republic and Slovakia would go on to maintain extremely close and friendly relations, over the next few years, Slovakia took a very different political and economic path from its former partner. While the Czechs pushed ahead with NATO and EU membership, Slovakia's European integration suffered as it came under the nationalist authoritarian rule of its independence leader, 
Vladimir Mechia. As concern grew over corruption, press freedom and judicial independence, the country came to be seen as the most problematic of the former Soviet satellite states of Central and Eastern Europe. All this changed in 1998 when a new centre-right government took over under Prime Minister Mikulas Jurinda. Committed to European integration, Slovakia quickly caught up and just six years later, in 2004, it joined NATO and then the European Union alongside nine other countries, including the Czech Republic. Although Slovakia continued to be seen as one of the most dynamic new members of the Union, in 2006 the centre-right administration was voted out and replaced by a populist left-wing nationalist government led by a new Prime Minister, Robert Fico. After the reforms of the previous government, which focused on the economic liberalisation needed to get Slovakia into the European Union, Fico and his Smer SD party concentrated on social welfare and public spending. There were also changes in foreign policy. The first significant point of departure was over Kosovo. Along with Greece, Cyprus, Spain and Romania, Slovakia refused to recognise its 2008 Declaration of Independence, contrary to the position taken by most of its EU and NATO partners. Tensions also emerged in 2015 when a migrant crisis erupted in Europe. In a move that angered many Western European states, Slovakia joined Hungary, Poland and the Czech Republic the so-called Visegrad 4, to reject calls to take in some of the million or so refugees that had arrived in the European Union. However, the biggest test came when Russia invaded and annexed Crimea in 2014, having already fallen out with Ukraine over Russian energy supplies just a few years earlier. Fico at first opposed EU sanctions on Moscow, arguing that Europe should maintain its economic links to Russia. He also emphasised that Slovakia, like other EU members, would be severely affected by any moves to limit Russian energy supplies. But despite these concerns, Slovakia eventually relented and aligned its policies with those of the European Union and NATO. Condemning Russia's actions and endorsing Ukraine's territorial integrity, the Slovak government went on to introduce sanctions on Moscow and began reducing its dependence on Russian energy. And despite past differences, it even helped Ukraine when Russia tried to limit gas supplies. By this point, and having been in power for most of the last decade, Fico appeared to dominate Slovak politics. But amidst growing accusations of authoritarianism and rampant state corruption, his tenure eventually came to an end in 2018, when a journalist investigating the links between politicians and organised crime was brutally murdered alongside his girlfriend. In the face of widespread public anger, Fico was forced to resign, albeit to be replaced by a political ally. From there, Slovakia seemed to be moving in a new direction. Having elected a young modernising president in 2019, a new right-wing coalition government came to power the following year, vowing to fight corruption and implement reforms. Meanwhile, following Russia's invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, and in contrast to the FITSO administration eight years earlier, the government aligned itself with its EU and NATO partners. As well as condemning the Russian attack and imposing sanctions on Moscow, Slovakia took in over 100,000 Ukrainian refugees and provided its neighbour with weapons, including fighter jets and anti-aircraft missile systems. But while Slovakia now seemed fully aligned with its Western partners, the mood inside the country was changing. In addition to growing disillusionment with the government, which many felt had failed to live up to its promises, there was also increasing public scepticism about the war in Ukraine. In a country where a large majority still saw Russia as a brotherly nation, polling showed that less than half the population supported sanctions against Moscow or economic and military support to Ukraine. These worries about the country's direction were highlighted in June 2023 when the President announced that having received death threats, she wouldn't be running for a second term. However, the most significant source of concern came as the country prepared for a general election that September. Five years after having been ousted, Fico was now attempting to return as Prime Minister. 
capitalizing on popular sentiment, he adopted an overtly pro-Russian position and challenged Slovakia's Western partners, arguing that sanctions were hurting the Slovak economy and that he'd oppose any further economic measures against Moscow. He also promised to stop any further arms supplies to Ukraine, insisting that Slovakia wouldn't send another bullet to its neighbor. Despite polling predictions that he'd lose the election, Vizzo went on to score a major victory. Taking around a quarter of the vote, he returned to power at the helm of a new coalition government. Once in office, any hopes that Vizzo's tough language had merely been campaign rhetoric rapidly disappeared. Within weeks, the new government announced the end of all military aid to Ukraine. From there, the Prime Minister continued to court controversy. In early 2024, he called Ukraine corrupt and under US domination and suggested that it would have to accept the loss of territory as the price of peace. He also reiterated his long-standing opposition to Ukrainian NATO membership, arguing that it was the basis for a third world war. There was also considerable anger when the Slovak foreign minister met his Russian counterpart, Sergei Lavrov, at a diplomatic forum in Turkey. On top of all this, Vizzo has also been building ties with Hungary's Viktor Orban. But all this said, Vizzo has also been careful not to cut relations with Ukraine altogether. In January 2024, he assured his Ukrainian counterpart that Slovakia would support Ukraine's EU accession and wouldn't block a large EU aid package to the country. This was followed by another meeting in April, where he announced that Slovakia would increase its business ties to Ukraine, strengthen transport links, and provide a corridor for Ukrainian agricultural goods to leave the country. Likewise, although Fizzo held to his promise to cut state military aid to Ukraine, he clarified that he wouldn't object to private support. This has led to an extraordinary development as thousands of Slovaks who object to the government's position have joined a crowdfunding campaign to support a Czech initiative to purchase ammunition for Ukraine. What lies behind this mixed messaging? is unclear. There are certainly many theories. Some have suggested that it may just reflect the close trading links between Ukraine and Slovakia. Or maybe Fizzo has seen the direction that the Ukraine war is taking. Alternatively, even if he instinctively supports Russia, Fizzo may also know that Slovakia can't or shouldn't break ties with its EU and NATO partners in the same way that Hungary's Viktor Orban has. Others have even suggested that maybe Fizzo isn't as pro-Russian as it may seem. But whatever Fizzo's position really is, his words and actions have created uncertainty about Slovakia's true aims and objectives. In this sense, he's undermined broader US and EU trust in the country's reliability as an ally. And at the same time, he's created the impression that Slovakia is indeed another weak link in the broader Western Front against Russia. I hope you found that useful. If so, here are some more videos that you might find interesting. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.